That was some crazy damage. GG, what was that? Half a trillion. I guess my damage is pretty good. <laughs> Guys, it's starting, man. My buff is just like completely fresh. I already hit Duriel for like a, a hundred... <laughs> like a hundred something million? Let's go. Hold Tablo, Barbarian, Charge, Hammer for the win. GG. Hey everybody, it's Rob here. As you may have seen in the intro, we are already rocking on our Barbarian here in the fresh season. And we've actually been uh, pretty fortunate to find some okay-ish items. We don't have really like any crazy stuff. I'm not rocking like any uber uniques or anything. I found one Starless Sky just a few uh, minutes ago basically, but I am um, not really using this one all too much. So this is like a Hoda bar build that can one-shot Duriel up to like 400 million damage without any uber uniques and with like very easy uh, to get gear and it even works without any uniques like right now I'm playing the Red for War from Varshan, the Tybalt's Will from Doriel and the God Slayer from Doriel but you don't need any of these like you'll just do a little less damage but Doriel will still die very very fast and the Banished Lords as well like so there is a few uniques here but those are like you know a few kills you should be able to get one of these so it's not too crazy uh, to try to get. But yeah, the main principle of the build remained the same, guys. You might remember the Whirlwind slash Horda Barbarian, like whenever we basically switch weapons, we're gaining Fury, as you can see here. Right now, obviously, my Fury regeneration is not that great because I don't really have that, that good gear. Right now, like, you want resource generation here on this ring. I just never, like, got it, basically. But yeah, here we're basically doing the rotation, like, whenever we um, have Duriel. And what we can do is we use the charge, so this one, it makes us unstoppable and it gives us resource, as you can see here. So this has like a very good synergy with Tarbot's Will. And then we can just uh, go to Doriel here, activate our buffs, and uh, hopefully just kill him in like two hits, like you saw there. Like, it's like a hundred million, like there's a lot of variants, right? Like a lot of buffs that are up as well. But basically we are rocking like a lot of Fury spent and uh, it's helping us like out tremendously, just uh, charging and getting the buff as well. So the new charge has been buffed a lot and you're getting like a very easy cooldown reset. It even gives you six second cooldown back whenever you charge the wheel, whenever you charge the boss. And it's basically like a like a battery. Like if you can reset it also with your shouts. You see if I if I drop my if I drop fury, and charge makes me unstoppable just for a millisecond, so I can keep doing it. I can do it now, boom, it gives me fury, and then if I want to reset it, I can just press my war cries or charge the wheel usually. Like that that would be easier uh, to just charge him. Uh, but I can reset it like this, and then again, I'm not unstoppable, and I can just boom get 50 fury times all your resource generation from Tarbot's Will. So I think that's a it's a really cool synergy here as we're getting another Tarbot's Will probably. Yep, 32. So that one's not that great. Um, but yeah, we are basically um, that's basically a new addition to the build. We don't need a challenging shout on the boss because like he doesn't really kill us if we kill him fast. Um, again, charge gives us good damage and gives us the the crazy resources. So we are rocking Hoda, very important here to have the maze. I mean, it always is a maze, you need, to, you need to assign a maze. And on Whirlwind, you need to assign your dual wield weapons, so we gain more attack speed. You can also go for your, if you hover it, S, right click, you can also go for your slashing. But I always recommend you go for dual wielding, because they have a faster attack speed base. So you can get a few more Whirlwind ticks uh, to get your red full roar buff, but more on that in a second. So basically the rotation, like you saw on Doriel, is like whenever he spawns, uh, you press your shots, you press your wrath, you start spinning, you sp start the, like pressing your whirlwind, like this, this, and then wrath as well, don't look at this now, then you start spinning and then you start smashing. Whenever you smash and you hit him, you're gonna get, like you see my fury jumping, like, you get resources back, uh, very comfortable. And then if you need resources, you can always charge and you can also get unstoppable again. And it also gives you the 40% multiplicative damage and it also lasts for another 4 seconds after you already... Um, like lost the unstoppability so it's a really good damage buff and you're just basically weapon switching and there is 
a few things that make that possible basically we have furious imports whenever we switch our weapons we gain six fury and that is again multiplied uh, by you know all your resource generation 20 here 40 here and then more from um you can get even more resource generation here from prolific fury if you want and this is a bunch of stuff basically to to get you a lot of resource and you're also spending a lot so you're healing which is also very cool and then um on top of this we are using weapons master here whenever we swap weapons we gain four percent of our maximum fury and same here we have a lot of fury basically in general so we are rocking like 214 fury and what you can also do is you add your re elixir's resourcefulness this one gives you the most damage by far i have one running right now and it gives you like 200 like ideally you want to have armor 300 resource or 250 resource it should be very easy to reach uh, if, you, if you have good gear. Right now I don't have it on, on my rings, for example. Actually, I have plus 8 here. But yeah, you want plus 14 and stuff. Um, so you can get quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I really like God Slayer Clown here, for example, because it gives me the 1.6 multiplier, like instantly uh, in the start of Doriel. So if I kill him in under 3 seconds, it basically gives me 60% damage. You just need to damage the boss. So that's very cool. And then we are rocking the new Juggernaut aspect here on our armor. I also will have a planner in the description. Um, so we're rocking Juggernaut here. This one just gives us armor for free. Look, look at this. We're just standing here and I even have a bad roll and only below 800 item power armor. We just have enough armor like right, by default with this. We don't have to stack any disobedience, nothing. Um, then we're rocking Ancestral Gauntlets here. This one just gives us the Quake um, and it also gives us 50% X damage multiplier. Then Time Battle, we already talked about it. Crazy Synergy with Charge. We also can get Unstoppable from Rallying and Cry, uh, from Wrath of the Berserk and then obviously from the Charge very cool stuff then we have a ghost walker here just to get here fast um you know like because you're spawning like all the way down here and you probably have to walk like quite a way um if you don't uh, you know if the fight is longer you can also take boots like this that have um lucky hit to increase your berserk duration but then again if you really want berserking you can just charge and put a few points into um Battle Fever, and then whenever you use a Brawling skill, which charges a Brawling skill, uh, you get Berserking for one second. But you need to do, uh, I think you need to, yeah, you need to damage an enemy. That's why it doesn't work here. So if you do it on Doriel, you will get Berserking uh, already. So that's also an option. I, I just prefer the movement speed right now. I have actually some crazy boots. I had this roll to like triple 60% rest. Um, that I don't have, I don't even have 925 weapons. That's one of the reasons I'm doing Duriel. This one has good stats, but uh, pretty weak. Right now we're rocking Edge Master here. You can also put the Earth Striker here. Um, rocking Convention of Elements on the second weapon. Again, you can also snapshot this, but I like CBA. I don't want to do it, so it's just easy and convenient like this. Um, then you have Limitless Rage. You probably want to put this on the two-hander long term. It was just like how I found the aspects in the right order. I don't even have a good roll here, so pretty basic. And yeah, maces are really good because they give you more overpower damage. Then this one here, I'm pretty happy with. Uh, it also is Earth Striker imprinted here, and this one will allow us whenever we weapon switch. So we switch between uh, Whirlwind. You see the 60, we switch between Whirlwind, we get 7, and then we hammer. And now we have basically our next attack guaranteed to overpower. This is how we proc even more overpowers, and it's also 1.5x multiplier. And then we're also spending like all these resources because in this build again, we're using Unbridled Rage because we have enough resources. Whenever we weapon switch, again, we gain resources. We don't really lose, like we just gain. So it's insane. And Hoda also, basically when we hit an enemy, it also makes us gain even more resources. 3% for 5 seconds, stacking up to 10 times, so a total of 30. So, um, yeah, and then we have resource generation on Ra Wrath with resource generation on Rallying Cry. It just gets crazy. Um, yeah, and then Banished Lords, obviously, like, we spend a lot of resources. Like, we spend 70 and 50. So, we spend 120 whenever we do our rotation, right? Because we smash and then we spin. So, we, we already spend, you see, we already spend enough resources. And that's going to trigger our Red Full Roar as well, giving us a guaranteed crit. And it's going to trigger... Our Banished Lord Talismans, which gives us, after spending 300 resources, we're going to get a guaranteed overpower. So every like three rotations, basically, we're getting another free overpower, and then we're getting an overpower from here. And we're also getting an overpower from our Bone Breaker, which is every 12 seconds. And the first overpower of every fight is going to come from Dominate. So we have like four different overpower sources, and they're all really, really powerful for a lot of damage. And then we are using the Unrelenting. Whenever we hit the boss, you also regain a portion of your resources. This one is not needed long term, and you can get another damage multiplier whenever you have like Grandfather and stuff. 
Um, but right now we don't have this because there's no Uber Uniques, we don't have a Shaco, we don't have a Grandfather. I hope they are dropping soon, we'll see. We'll continue farming them. But yeah, this is basically how it looks. It works without Uber Uniques and right now we're using this setup just for um, just for convenient and having lots and lots of fury. Uh, you can also use Starless Skies here, but Starless Skies got buffed and it's a 1.4 multiplier if you have it. But in the end, I don't think it's really gonna be the best because it also makes you spend less resources. And as we already established, spending resources is good for our Banished Lords, it's good for our Red for Roar, it's good for our, um, it's good for our Fortify, this is like our main way to get Fortify, and it's very good for our invigorating, for our healing. So uh, spending less resources on Barb is not necessarily the best thing. It still gives you 40% damage, so it's still a good ring. Uh, but yeah, you can just like play a normal ring and you don't need this uber unique. For, like, what would be really good and a straight upgrade is obviously Grandfather and Shaper. So if I already have Grandfather right now, um, we're hitting for like 300, like this is like 300 million, this is like a Duriel kill, like how it typically looks. Like you know the boss spawns, like you smash him like two or three times, uh, whenever it overpowers, boom and he's dead, right? So we're hitting him for, yeah, 300 million and then like I have like a few kills like this. You probably saw it in the intro, like he just spawns and uh, we overpower him for like quite the healthy amount. And yeah, if we would double these, uh, if we would double these hits, if you take 300 and you get a double from Grandfather plus Additive Crit, like you're probably going to be hitting for like 700, 800 million already. And as you guys remember, we did the calculation. We're going to be hitting easily for over a billion once we have like all the stuff, man, and our, our Uber Uniques and our proper setup. And I don't even have a 925 weapon right now, you know. So there is a lot of room uh, for further improvement. Um, this build is super strong. On our Construct right now, we are rocking uh, super supportive. Again, the Construct doesn't really feel um, like it's doing any damage by itself. It also, in general, feels pretty underwhelming. But there is a pretty strong combination here that I wanted to talk about real quick. I'm probably going to make a separate video going in detail once I've tested this. But basically what you can do, and we need a calculator for this, is uh, we um, use the Flash of Adrenaline. So this one gives us multiplicative damage, like our Construct like runs around and gives us a multiplicative damage boost. And it's giving us 14% for 8 seconds, and then it has a 16 second cooldown. Obviously this one is not maxed. I think at max rank it's like 20%. Yeah, 6 more ranks, so it's gonna be 20% damage. Um, and then we are already using cooldown support on it. And this one goes up to 40% when it's maxed at rank 10. And duration support, and this one goes up to... I think 4 seconds? 10 times, yeah, it's gonna go up to 4 seconds. So this buff here, that is right now, a big cooldown, plus uh, low duration is gonna be, I think the base, let me remove this real quick. I gotta remove this, yes. So you see now, 20 second cooldown. So it's gonna be reduced by 40%, right? So we're getting a 12 second cooldown, and right now it has 8 seconds duration, and duration support is going to buff it by to 12 seconds. So we're basically going to have a 12 second cooldown spell. It's also going to have 12 second duration. But it's going to be really insane. So we're getting 20% uh, uh, more damage. And then we can combine this with the new Uber Stone, which is Genesis. Um, so we're actually getting 20% times 2.5 from this. So we're getting 50% damage bonus multiplicatively like all the time basically. So it's gonna be pretty strong, but yeah, it's still gonna be, you know, very um, like unimpactful. Like you'll have some more damage and yeah, 1.5x multiplier here when it's finalized all up all the time. Sounds pretty strong, but <laughs> I don't know, like overall the, the season theme just like feels uh, pretty underwhelming because like this just doesn't really change your gameplay, right? It just gives you higher number equals good, right? And then, yeah, you can rock like some skill here. I'm rocking Whirlwind and then just go like resource support. I have uh, crit chance or toughness and damage reduction, yeah. You can do these kinds of things, but um, I don't really think it matters like all too much, at least as of right now. Like okay, this is like my setup and I also have it in the planner. Then skill tree is looking like this. Again, I'll probably make a separate video about the stones. 
Um, so we have two points in Whirlwind, three points in Hammer. We also use Pressure Point because we don't have the Empiric Powers anymore. This one keeps targets vulnerable. Should Duriel not die in our um, exploit duration, which is basically our main source of vulnerable, it only lasts for three seconds though. So we have vulnerable three seconds and Godslayer three seconds. And if that is not enough to kill him, then we still, or you can still take points in Pressure Point. Points in Pressure Point for extra vulnerable duration. Um, so yeah, on World 1 we are using the F Fury rune, obviously, so whenever we hit the boss we get 4 Fury, which is again multiplied by all the Fury multipliers. We have 3 life, we have uh, 2 shouts only right now because we're using charge here with the cooldown rune, obviously. Uh, we still have like 1 point in outburst and toughest net because we have a lot of bleed damage reduction. Um, but yeah, it's not 100% necessary anymore because we are not playing disobedience. Juggernaut is like a way very welcome change, especially against bosses where it would be very hard usually to have your disobedience decks, but right now it is it's pretty uh, comfortable. Um, but yeah, we still have bleed damage reduction in our Paragon, for example, right here. So it's still useful to have these two points here in the in the bleed sources. And then yeah, you can rock Battle Fever if you need Berserking, or if you need more Fury or more Toughness, you can allocate points in any of these. These are all three good. I got the points in more damage though, slaying strike, just more deeps is always good. Uh, pit fighter, close damage, uh, counter offensive, again fortify comes from our warbringer paragon board here. So we're just, whenever we spend as much fury as like we do, we spend a lot with unbridled rage, we get a lot of fortify. Then we have crit multiplier, uh, vulnerable multiplier, over power multiplier, this one has been nerfed a bit, but it's still pretty strong, 24% X. Um, fierce impulse for weapon switches, invigorating for healing. Wrath the Berserk for double damage multiplier. We spend a lot of fury and unbridled rage. It gives us more fury spent, which is also a positive thing and gives us more damage. But that's insane. Paragon boards looking like this. And again, we have the planner. So um, exploit here in the starter board. We unfortunately don't have enough points to take all the fury nodes here, even though fury is a, a multiplier with our uh, wrath. And it's also a multiplier with our resources because we are generating based on percent of our uh, resources. So the more max fear we have, the more percent this 4% is going to be. Um, but yeah, we unfortunately don't have enough points, so we can't take this. Unless you want to take out something else like DPS up here, you could you could consider. But I think having like some more, at least right now with weak gear, the Berserking is a big multiplier uh, for the Blood Rage here, which I don't really have the crazy amounts of yet. Yet. I'll work on it. And then we have Crusher here in the second board. Again, easy over Power Source, uh, Warbringer, Fury Nodes. And we're coming here, this was the old TOB board, this is where Ira goes in. If you have more points, you can also allocate three more points here for another 10.6 damage while working. but uh, yeah, we don't have points left. Uh, Barsh, uh, Fierce here, very good. Carnage for more attack speed. This allows you to switch the weapons faster, makes the build go very smooth. More Berserking, um, then up here we're having Dominate, that's Decimator, crazy multipliers, crazy overpower. This one is not even leveled fully, it's like level 16, so we're getting a lot higher and more damage from there. We have Weapons Master here for the Fury Node, uh, one here for the Brass. Still need some decks actually. And then up here we're rocking Marshall. Very good to reduce our shouts, cooldowns, and it's also boosting some other nodes. You can also use Might here if you want, but I just like Marshall to have like additional cooldown if Duriel doesn't die. But yeah, we could actually use, I think I have it leveled, so we can just switch in Might here. And uh, there you go. Now it gives you like bonus to the magic nodes, which is also pretty good. We might do a few runs with Might. And then we have the Blood Rage multiplayer here. This one can be snapshotted, but we're not really using it right now because we don't need it. Duriel is already one or two hits dead. And we have the Bone Breaker for another overpowered source. This one also has an icon here right now, as you can see. Um, pretty cool stuff. But yeah, that's been the build, guys. That's the um, Barbarian. Completely one shot in Duriel with like trash gear, no uber uniques. Like you kill Duriel in a few seconds. It is technically a one-shot, like if you if you get the right RNG for the start, but most of the of most of my fights right now, on like yeah, keep in mind, this is day gone, two man. of the season. And most of my fights are, are basically just like two hits, like two overpower hits, right? Like and then boom, he's dead. But most of them look like this, like Doyle just melts basically, like boom, boom, dead. Pretty funny. So yeah, that's a cool build. Um, no uber uniques, nothing. Um, the planner is gonna be in the description. I'm gonna link it here again. Um, there is different setups, there's also an endgame variant that has uber uniques, but again, you don't really need them, so you can just try this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, um, leave a comment, leave a like if you like what you see or if you have any questions, 
let me know down below. Um, good luck in Season 3, my friends. Hope we're going to get some updates to the Season team because a lot of people, including me, like the Vault and uh, the Pet is also like not that impactful, like I mentioned before. I also made a separate video about that, uh, like yesterday, uh, that you can check out um, and gave some feedbacks. And you guys know with uh, with the Abattoir of Zia, we also got a lot of changes mid-season. They nerfed or they buffed the XP that uh, the, the Glyph is uh, required to have, like they lowered it significantly, they removed the Vampirics and they made Avatar of Zia easier in the start and they gave, uh, you know, more damage reduction or like the Avatar of Zia used to do way more damage and uh, after they changed it, it was way less. So they improved it a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure there is a lot of good, good changes coming for the game. Um, let's hope we get them soon. Enjoy your season, guys. Take care, my friends. GG. If you like this video, Make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day, so come and say hi.